guys and welcome to my introductory video into heroes and generals you guys wanted to see it and so well pretty much here it is and with that i need to thank uh keith heaton 67 and this is zeke two of my followers on twitch you guys are awesome and you guys wanted to know the ins and outs of how to play heroes and generals as if you are a brand new beginning player well some of the things you see on my screen, you're not going to have, and I will go into detail about those. One of which is when you play, you're not going to have this little thing in the top that says Veteran Membership. Now, with me in TeamSpeak is J-Man. Hello. And Warhammer 2020. Hello. And they're both big, big, big followers and fans of mine as much as I am of theirs. And uh, basically, we're all doing a collab here. So uh, if I get something wrong, they're going to correct me because trust me, J-Man's been playing the game longer than I have. So <laughs> here, pretty much here goes. So what I'm going to start off is I'm going to start off on the upper left corner and then move across explaining what they, all they do before I actually get into what you see on the screen. So in the top left corner, you've got your, you've got your credits, your war funds, and your gold. By clicking on it, you get a small little pop-up that explains what they are. Credits is what you what your soldier gets paid for. Think of it as his uh, as his living wage. Basically, every time you kill, every time every tank you blow up, every capture point you capture, uh, uh, various other things, you will gain credits for. It's that simple. Now, war funds is a special, unique credits that only generals can spend. Okay. Now, I do have a general. Don't worry. That's more advanced. I'd like to correct. What's that? Um, second lieutenants can use this as well. And, oh, yep. It, okay, so second lieutenants and up get to use the war funds. Thank you for that war. And also, um, there is a flat rate of if you play a match for an hour, you receive X amount, which is mm -hmm. dependent upon your level. Exactly. So you, you, you will get you will get credits and gold. Gold is the premium currency used by this game because this game is free to play, and in order to keep the lights on, the servers running. They, you know, they ask that you, you know, put spend ten, twenty dollars, etc., etc., and uh, you can actually use gold to ex to, to accelerate your ribbon in in, in, uh, in certain weapons and stuff. I'll explain what the ribbons are in a minute, but just remember, gold is a premium currency, and it will actually cost you real money. Okay, so now that that's mentioned, next to it is the store button. On the store button. It lists, you know, where you can buy the gold, memberships, soldiers, weapons, vehicles, assault teams, war bonds, and ribbon boosters. Well, pretty much everything in the store that you see there uses gold. So if you want to buy a new soldier, you can use gold. If you want to assault teams, you can use gold, etc., etc. Now, like many other free-to-play games, memberships are equal to that of a veterancy. As you can see, you can buy it for 24 hours. 30 days or 90 days and doing so gives you a lot of benefits an extra 25 percent credit earn uh, percent credits earned 75 percent war funds earned 100 percent exp earned for your rank 25 percent exp earned for your ribbons and you get to use two perk slots now i call them perk slots because i come from playing games like battlefield and call of duty where they're called perks not badges in this game they are called badges okay now i won't explain what the badges do just yet i'll save that for another video now you've got two great big other buttons one's called heroes which lists your soldiers the other one is generals now i have a general so you're going to get to see this but normally you won't get to see this because you're not a high enough rank or b have a general now this is the world war and this is what is more of an rts section of the game if anything and in which you can pick three factions america soviets or germans now unfortunately if you are brand new to the, the game and you have a virgin stock account where your soldier is not even above rank two this is way out of your league so ignore it okay so that's all you need to know right now next to it is my veteran membership now i do have premium my premium runs out in 27 days but don't worry about that because i will be definitely getting another 90 days worth afterwards after that you've got this little icon which looks like a ghost with his arms stretched out this will take you to the training mode known as first blood now this will get you into the understanding of how the game works first things first it will teach you how to use semi-autos bolt actions 
LMGs, SMGs, sniper rifles, hand grenades, knives, pistols, you name it. If it's in the game, it's majority in this one. Now, First Blood, when you do complete it, gives you a perk. That perk in question is called First Blood. Now, what that does is gives you 15% extra stamina. Okay, Great little perk to get you started in the game. Now, notice all of my other perks are either silver or gold. That's because I've been playing the game for quite some time. Now, the majority of these perks, don't worry about them for now, okay? Again, I'll explain the perks later. Now, you're taking a look at one of my highest ranked soldiers, which is uh, Steve Rogers. Now, if you've been following my channel for quite some time, you know I've got a series called uh, Road to Recon with Steve motherfucking Rogers. And so, this is Steve. And as you can see, I've got a variety of different weapons. Now, how do you unlock weapons? Well, it's that simple. Right down near the soldier's foot, you'll see a little white bar with a star on it that says next unlocks. Click it, it shows you a ribbon overview. Basically, this will show you uh, the ribbons that you get. In real life, when a soldier does a deed, he gets a ribbon on his chest and also on his arms. So pretty much, as you can see, this lists everything I've done with Steve Rogers. As you can see, I'm up to one star gold in my Jeep. Heck, I'm even up to three star bronze using the German vehicles because I keep stealing them. Um, hell, I mean, look, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm two star bronze in the Soviet recon vehicle and I'm not even recon. So go figure. Basically, anything you use, you will get EXP. Now, as you can see, I'm four-star gold in the M1903 and four-star gold in the M1 Garand. Why? They're my favorite weapons. That's why. Also, the 1911 is one-star gold. What can I say? I like my American weapons. Now, up top, they, they're categorized by simple things. Physical is everything you do physical. Running, jogging, crouching, crawling, farting, pooping, burping. If it <laughs> is physical, you will get EXP for it. If you're running, whether you're sprinting or not, which is a separate thing, you will still get physical training EXP. If you are crouched while taking fire and trying to run away, you get combat movement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, parachute, because I don't have a para, okay, I can't comment on the parachute, but Warhammer does have a para and he can comment on the parachute perk let's see parachute um you talk, you're talking full on parachute because i'm looking at it right now mm -hmm. um I'll just come, fall out of see. the sky and parachute because whenever you get the first <laughs> whenever you get the first one you get free fall mm -hmm. and normally whenever you jump out of the, out of the paraplane um once you hit a certain altitude your your chute would automatically deploy put that on you can self-deploy you could ah. be 30 feet from the ground, you could be right out of the aircraft. So so pretty much, it's kind of like how in Battlefield 4, in, in all the Battlefields, yes. you can pull your shoot whenever. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. okay. And, the, and, the and that, is, badge. that is only with the free fall badge, and to get parachute the ribbon up, just parachute. That's all you have to do. There's nothing yeah, else you can do to raise it. Just fall out of the plane, activate your parachute, and safely land. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and the next perk... Uh, paratraining allows you to deploy faster in the aircraft because you have the first one of paratraining bronze which makes you 15% faster paratraining silver 30% faster and the very last one it makes you 50% faster nice very nice okay and, and then and then you got forever. tactical defense and recon tactical you gain exp for capturing points defense you gain exp for defending the points and recon you get for again it, it's, it's kind of like a, a recon is kind of like a mix between tactical and defense you gain exp for neutralizing caps not capturing them capturing is okay when you neutralize it you gain exp on tactical when you actually capture it you gain exp for your recon okay they actually clarified this um so if you if you're trying to level up your recon without you know wanting to be like a sniper recon that's how you do it now, Infantry Assault. This ribbon is very unique, as in you can only get EXP towards it by using semi-auto weapons. So, if you're, if you're American, that would or be the... Action. Or bolt yeah, Like I said, that would be a bolt action or an M1 Garand. Pistols don't count towards it. 
Trust me, it upsets me. It upsets J-Man. It upsets Warhammer. It's so stupid. It is. It's stupid. <laughs> There's semi-automatics, so why don't they work in infantry? So, but they any, don't. Any gun, has any gun should, should work. Count toward it. Yeah. And any any infantry weapon should count. I do. It's just ridiculous. I, I agree. And then you've got explosives, then tank destruction, and close combat. Pretty much, they're all self-explanatory, and if you need any more information, you just click on it, okay? So, now we've explained the ribbons and whatnot, let me explain some other things. Now, first things first, what I like to do, okay, now bear in mind, this is when I'm live streaming. So, I'm going to explain my settings that I use when I live stream. You click on the little gear cog on the top right corner, then you go to settings. I usually set my master volume up and then control it separately in my uh, um, stereo mixer. Take the music all the way off because the music's really boring and crappy. Sound effects, I keep that. At a, sound effects, I usually keep that in the middle. But for now, I've got it lowered a little bit because I was using a tank earlier. And the cannon sounds were deafening some of my viewers who are wearing headsets. <sighs> rip headsets. And um, another thing you can do to speed up your map loading is go to, to the campaign box and see at the top slider bar, you max it all the way to the right. Turn off show battle flames, which is very CPU intensive. Turn that off and literally just top one all the way up to the top. That's all you need to do. Under miscellaneous, uh, double check the preload soldier and preload rank images, and then you're done. That, believe it or not, actually shaves down your load time by about 30%. It's that easy. Now... When you first start, your soldier is going to be pretty much this guy. He's not going to have the spade. He's going to have the most annoying thing in the universe, hand grenades. Now, let me explain something to you about this game. If you want to make credits in this game really, really fast, don't throw grenades. Agreed. Don't. Don't. Or use bazookas or any anti-tank weapons that yes. aren't Panzerfausts. Do not use any kind of explosive okay and i know you're thinking well what if there's a tank on my or, or, or on the enemy team just leave it the hell alone don't go anywhere near it don't get into its arc of fire well what if it's covering an objective then jump on the tank whistle at it wait for the commander to stick his head out and shoot him in the head then you just jack the tank it's what i do every time that's... but then again i also yep. have sticky grenades i have a soldier that's dedicated to destroying tanks and yes trust me it bloody hurts my wallet every time i do that ultimately yes, it, it is it, it, it is a, a problem currently going on in the in the, this current build the zukov build it is a problem right now with the zukov build they do say they are saying that they're going to be working on balancing the anti-tank weaponry cost and Again, this is the Zukov build. This isn't any other build. This is just the Zukov build, which is why I'm saying this statement. Leave grenades the hell alone. They're alone. not they're not worth it. The moment you've Heck, got you'll your... probably end up killing more friendlies than enemies. Exactly. First thing you do, you click on the grenade and then you uncheck that little checkbox. Okay? And then you just leave it the hell alone. That's it. You've taken the hand grenade, you've put it back in the box, you said thanks but no thanks, and you're walking away. Now, depending on what faction you've chosen will depend on uh, uh, a few simple tasks. One of which is, if you're German, you're going to start off with the Gewehr 43. If you're Soviet, you're going to start off with the SVT 40. If you're American, you're going to start off with the M1 Garand, or the M1G as it's called here. They're all good semi auto rifles. That's, that's, that's all I need to say. They are all good semi auto rifles. I went ahead and bought all of my soldiers a shovel. The reason why is <laughs> I take immense joy in smacking someone upside the head with a shovel because you can just hear them chewing on their microphone in rage because they just got killed with a shovel. It's just that pong noise is just so satisfying, you have no idea. Anyway, now, I'm not saying buy a shovel. I'm just saying that's what I do. Now, again, I'm going to explain some other things. Uh, don't bother renaming your soldier. Honestly, it, it, I've only got my soldiers named because I'm me. I'm a live streamer. A lot of my stream, my followers want me to name my soldiers after them or after... See, again, what I tend to do is I tend to name the soldier close to what 
they're going to be. Now, Steve Rogers, for example, is going to go recon. As you can see, I won't unlock recon till rank 9. So, I've got three more ranks to go with Steve. So, I can enjoy mixing it up and trying different weapons, trying different loadouts, trying different things to see what suits me best. But, one of the tips I can give you is simply this. If once you've found the faction you enjoy, Soviet, German, or American, it doesn't matter, okay, stick to it. Just stick to it. Don't don't go a little bit of German, a whole lot of Soviet, and then a little no just, no, just stick to one faction. You will be better off for it. Stick to one faction. Think 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 of the factions as being on a boat with three holes in the ship. If you plug two of those holes, your ship's going to sink still, to but sink. just not as fast. Okay? Well, if you focus just on one faction, you literally... For example, if you're, if you're on a boat that is sinking, and you see a desert island, and you've got three holes in your ship, are you just going to let all three holes just start pouring water? Or are you going to plug all three and then paddle your little ass to the island? So, basically, that's what you do. Stick with one faction... Don't necessarily stick with just one soldier in that faction. Now, I know a lot of live streamers like Cotton Gamer, Wolfbang, Be Fine, myself, uh, uh, Warhammer, we all have that one go-to soldier. Like me, I have Steve Rogers. He's my go-to soldier. But at the same time, you're actually hurting yourself by doing it. Yes, you make just a little bit of credit because he's the higher rank. The higher the rank, the more credits he makes per hour unfortunately that means the rest of your soldiers suffer because you're like oh i need credits i need credits i have actually found in through testing that i make on par only about three percent less credits using uh, uh 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 using frank johnson here than i would with steve rogers and steve has a pistol a knife and and, and all the other weapons in the game but my poor old Frank Johnson here doesn't have Jack Piddly Squit. Reason why is because I stupidly, and I'm going to say this now, I stupidly went ahead and I ordered me, well, I, I got me a gold general, okay? Assuming I could transfer equipment from one to another, no. That was the most stupidest thing you could ever do. Don't buy a general with gold. Leave him the hell alone. My mistake, learn from it. Do as Cobra says, not as Cobra does, okay? Trust me, just don't buy a gold general. It's just not worth it. So, back on top, back on track. So you've got a brand new soldier, okay? You, you've got your Frank Johnson or, or Vasily Weitzes or whatever his name is, okay? First things first, you want to click that little wrench next to your weapon. You're going to get a pop-up. This pop-up is the maintenance side. Now you're thinking, maintenance? What the hell? In this game, you have to repair and replenish your ammunition. For example, notice that the M uh, M two three hundred six ball ammo is order is got a check mark field. Uh, the field trigger has a check mark field, and the weapon has a check mark field. If you do not check these marks and not realize it and go into battle, after about maybe 10, 20 games, you come back, you're going to say, "Warning, weapon broken." And your Gerund is broken. And it's going to cost you about 30,000 credits to fix your rifle. Do you have 30,000 credits after that? I don't think so. So, you just double check those little boxes. It saves you a whole hell of work. Now, notice I have the field trigger job. This allows my Gerund to fire faster. You won't have this. You will just have the option for the ammunition. Okay, so just leave those little check marks on. Leave them on the silver, not the gold. Just to double check. And then once that's done, your soldier is set. You've got no grenades, so you don't have to worry about constantly having to, to run out. You know, and, and paying out the arse for them. And your rifle is ready to use. And pretty much that's it. Make sure you do the training. I, When I make a soldier, I tend to have a set goal in mind of what I want to do. For example, um, like I told, told you, Frank Johnson, he's eventually either going to be dedicated anti-tank or dedicated LMG. 
Now, what that means is he's either going to be crowd control or he's going to be anti-tank destruction. Now, you're thinking, wait a minute, but didn't you say AAT weapons are expensive? Yes, they are. There is a way around that, though. Now, ooh, what's the secret? This is the secret. You buy the bloody Jeep. That's it. Just buy a Jeep. You're thinking, how can a Jeep kill a tank? I'll tell you. Buy the bloody Jeep. Buy the bloody Jeep. Drive the fucking Jeep. Drive the fucking Jeep. Get your Jeep rank gold star one. That will allow you to buy a lovely little equipment thing known as dun 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 anti tank. And what that will do, right here, you just saw me double check the, the repair mark on it. Every time you grab a Faust, that will take about a third of health off of the tank. Now, bear in mind, Panzerfausts have a hard time against heavy tanks. IS-2s, Pershings, and Tigers, Tiger 2s. They have an incredibly hard time penetrating. Okay? They do. It's a known fact. But, for medium and light tanks, you will destroy them. Okay? Now, what I tend to do when I first spawn in my Jeep is I get out my Jeep, grab a Panzerfaust, because it takes 15 to 20 seconds for that crate to refresh to give you another... F it's technically a free Panzerfaust. So I grab one. I'm in my Jeep. I drive off to the enemy tank. Okay? I, 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 I get a rough idea of where the enemy tank is, and I drive about 50 meters away from the enemy tank. Or I try to hide my Jeep. Okay? I pop out, shoot the Faust, run away. While that tank's thinking, wait, what a minute, what the hell just happened? You know, I've run back to my Jeep, grab another Faust, count to five, run forward, fire. Hit him again. Now, if he gets out of his tank, kill the tank driver. You've just now jacked his tank. Or you can run back to the Jeep, grab a Faust, and finish the tank off. You've just made about 2,000 credits. And it only cost you... 60 credits. That is how you make money killing tanks. Leave the bazookas alone. Leave the panzer crackers alone. Leave any anything that's dedicated anti-tank alone with the exception of the panzerfausts. Okay? Just trust me on this. Just trust me on this. Okay? Leave everything else alone. I've got it on my Americans. I even have it on my Germans. Okay, see? Well, okay. My German, he's got magnetic grenades instead. But it's still the same principle. So you can uncheck, recheck, go to here, all fixed, done. Go to my soldier, grab his anti-tank, which is these guys. These things cost me about 1,500 credits to repair. And that's two. And it takes two of them to take care of one tank. Sometimes even three. Now, you'll be given these anti-tank mines, these M1A1s. <sighs> yes, they are cheap. They're only about 60 credits to replace. But you need a minimum of two mines per tank now. In either the Young update or the Zukov update, they severely nerfed tank mines. So they're not, 100%, seems like. not worth it. They're just not worth it. Okay. Yeah, they're great at killing things like Jeeps and APCs and, and, and scout cars. But against tanks, what they're designed for, because it does say anti-tank. It doesn't say anti-recon or anti-infantry. It says anti-tank. Yet they are completely freaking useless right now. And so many people have sent tickets in. I've sent tickets in. They keep saying, oh, it's an issue. We're working on it. Blah, 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 blah. But again, as of the Zukov update, okay, just don't bother they're not worth it leave the bazooka alone leave the pa uh, 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 panzer shrek uh, 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 panzer shrek alone as well it's not worth it the repair costs for them are ridiculous just leave them the hell alone okay guys so that's how you make money no grenades just don't bother just leave them the hell alone just put them back in the crate put the lid on the crate hand the crate back to the supply officer and says, you crazy, and just turn around and walk away. Now, 
you may notice that yes, I do have quite a lot of soldiers. Honestly, I don't like. I just don't like so the, the feel of the Soviet Empire, Soviet whatever. So I don't. I've only got two Soviet soldiers. I've got three German and th now four American. I yes, I do lean towards the Americans. So I will be using the Americans as reference. However, J Man is predominantly German and German, and Warhammer is predominantly German. So yes, like I said. <clears throat> honestly when you do start a new soldier all you're going to have is the gewehr and hand grenade put the hand grenade away don't even use it take it out of your lineup just don't even acknowledge they exist leave them the hell alone the amount of people that come into my live stream and ask me cobra 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 how do i make money i just told you <laughs> i literally just told you the secret asian technique in making credits in this <laughs> game get a jeep if you if you're wondering how you get the jeep trucks party trucks farm trucks bicycles <laughs> it doesn't matter anything that goes bring bring vroom vroom honk honk take it okay trucks bicycles hell someone else's car do a gta throw them out the fucking driver's seat saying you're a fool you don't know how to drive it hop in the damn thing and and you know i i believe i i love stealing other nations vehicles on my soldiers just for the sheer lulls APCs, I love stealing them. Scout cars, I love stealing them. Tanks, they're just too hilarious to steal. You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, what you've got to concentrate on is teamwork. Another thing, you want to make credits? Capture points. Alpha, Charlie, Bravo, X-Ray, it doesn't matter how many points are on the map. Do the objective. Don't be the lone wolf. Don't be the dick that's on the encounter map and runs off to the train and sits on top of the train thinking you're Vasily Zaitsev or freaking Mark Wahlberg and you're the next best fucking marksman since fucking sliced bread, but you're not, okay? You're screwing over your team and yourself for your KDR. It's not about your kill-to-death ratio. It's about doing the fucking objectives. I cannot stress that enough, Okay? How do you win? Oh, they how capped the... Hey, think about it. How did you lose? Well, they captured the zone. Okay. Well, how do you win? By sitting on a train? Eek! By going out to the forest and start? Eek! How do you win? You just gave yourself the answer. You capture the fucking point. You capture the fucking point. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, it doesn't bloody matter. You capture the bloody point, damn your KDR, okay? If you go 83 and 0, congratulations. Mm, it doesn't mean your penis is any bigger. It just means you're that fucking stupid that you just didn't give a shit. And you wonder, oh, how did we lose that one? Well, oh, I don't know. Maybe because you didn't do your damn job. And you'll notice you will make fuck all for credits doing it that way. I've seen multiple i've seen multiple players live streaming and they're like in a bite they're, they're in a bf 109 and they go 60 and 2 or 60 and 3 and they're like well how did that just cost me twenty seven thousand credits uh well let's see how much ammunition did you expend on your plane how many bombs did you drop did you capture any points did you do anything constructive? Did you shoot down any enemy fighters? Did you kill any paraplanes? Did you blow up any tanks? You, you have to do what the role is for. If you're a recon, recon, reconnaissance. You go forth, you spot tanks, you spot units, you spot planes, you spot everything, and you get the fuck out of there. It's not about... oh. I'm all the way at the beginning of our spawn and I'm sniping guys all the way at Charlie. <laughs> yeah, okay. Are you helping the team though? No, you're not. Be a helpful player. Do the freaking objective. That's what it's for. And believe it or not, you will actually start to win more than you bloody lose. There's one thing I am incredibly grateful for to Ritu that they haven't done, that they've done, the other free-to-play games haven't done. Now, I play lots of free-to-play games like World of Warships, World of Tanks, uh, War Thunder. In those games, you actually get less credits in EXP if you lose. If they did that here in Heroes and Generals, no one would be above rank 5. Ever. 
but they don't. You get the same amount of EXP and credits if you win as if you lose. So even if the game does come down to those last few tickets or those last few lives, or you're, you're, you're constantly fighting over this one fucking objective and you lose it and you take it and you lose it and you take it and you lose it and you take it. At the end of the game, if you're sweating and so spent that you felt like you just was in a mass orgy with a hundred clones of Jenny McCarthy, guess what? You did a good fucking game. You had a good fucking game. Okay? Jesus Christ, let it go. You did good. You tried your best. Okay? You tried your best. That's all that matters. That's all that ever matters. Try your damn best. Do the objectives. That's doing your best. Okay? If you're a recon, spot them. If you're a para, take an objective. If you're uh, an infantryman, support each other. If you see a, if you see an abundance of enemy planes, hop on triple A's, shoot the fucking things down. Don't just say, "Oh, there's no road." Like do your damn jobs. That's all you got to do. Do your roles that you were born to do, that you were born to be. Just do it. Trust me, I will be adding a Shia LaBeouf little gif here. Just do it, okay? <laughs> Trust me, just do it. You can do it. And stop saying, well, I'm on a potato computer. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to give you a, a teeth-clenching th ooh moment here. I was playing Gears of War on a single-core PC with 4 gigs of RAM and onboard graphics. My frame rates was 12 frames a second, and I was playing Gears of War. You know what? I didn't care about the frame rate. I didn't care about the fact that it looked like basically Mr. Potato Man everywhere. You want to know why? I was having fun. I was enjoying myself. Now, granted, yes, if you are a live streamer like me, you do get a little bit competitive, okay? Because ultimately, it's not necessarily about the game. It's about trying to make your stream visually quality, audio quality, all around just more better for your followers to watch you. I let all of my followers see my highs and my lows, my happy times and my sad. I, I have shown my followers and you guys here on YouTube more things about me than I have ever shared to a shrink. Okay? And you know what? I don't care because you're family to me. And that's all that matters. Now, this is a lengthy video and I've really got to... No, summit short long story short get rid of fucking grenades don't even look at grenades don't even look at anything explosive unless you see a tank if you see a bloody tank pick up a panzerfaust and blow it the hell up as michael kane says once you're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off all right just blow it to pieces okay now also find your route find the calling you want to be Okay, if you think that you're going to be a fighter pilot, watch streamers who have German fighter pilots or American fighter pilots or Soviet fighter pilots. Get all the tips and advice from them that you can. Okay, they'll keep telling you, especially when it comes to heroes in general, use dev controls, use the dev controls, use the dev controls. I didn't know, even know what the fuck the dev controls are. Just stand there and say, what, you have I, a... I don't know either. Honestly, I'm like, would you have a dev sit at your keyboard and control the thing for you? You know, and you're just like pulling on his hair like Ratatouille. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, but me, yes, you see, I do have a tanker. I have a light tanker. And you're thinking, oh, great, he has a chaffee. No, I don't. I have an M5 Stuart. I cannot stand the chaffee. What? I cannot stand the chaffee. Believe it or not, the M5 Stuart has tougher frontal armor than the chaffee. The stock ammo on a Panzer 1C and a Panzer 2C cannot penetrate a chaffy from the front but it can penetrate the it, it can penetrate uh sorry it cannot penetrate the m5 stuart from the front but it can penetrate the chaffy wow yeah uh-huh just because it's higher up in the experience line doesn't necessarily make it better also yes i do have medium tanks unlocked i do have the m3 lee Frankly, the M3 Lee from World of Tanks and War Thunder and Christ knows how many other games I've played has left such a sour taste in my mouth. Just looking at it makes me want to vomit. 
it might as well be really Kim. Ka- it, it might as well be Kim Kardashian's ass for all I care. Now the M4A1 Sherman and the Easy Eight Sherman, those are nipple rubbing worthy. Plain and simple, the tummy cookers are nipple rubbing worthy. That's all I need to say on that. And ultimately, yes, I do plan on getting me a Sherman. But sadly, I have to unlock the Chaffee first. And I'm not a big fan of said Mr. Chaffee. Not a fan of it at all. And frankly, you will learn that there are certain tanks, certain tank destroyers, certain heavy tanks, whatnot, that don't appeal to you. Don't get them. You don't have to get them. Even if you, like, like, like right now, if I have to get everything in this game, I would be broke. I'm telling you that right now. Because I'd have to buy the bar, and then I'd have to buy the uh, M1 MC carbine, and then I'd have to buy the light machine gun, then the Webley revolver, then the Thompson machine gun. But you can't use them all. Can't use them all. You cannot use them all. Dun 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 dun. Pokemon. You can't use them all. Okay, so I stick to the weapons that I know I'm going to be using as a recon, which is SMGs, semi-autos, and bolt actions. So Thompson, Grease Gun, M1 Garin, uh, um, and uh, M1903, which I've named Freedom Prevails. Yes, my bolt action rifle is set up for one-shot kills. And yes, I do get one-shot kills from about 200, 300 yards. And yes, it does piss off a lot of people, but you know what? Freedom fucking prevails. And ultimately, ultimately, you notice I don't own the Browning Automatic. I won't ever own ever. the Browning Automatic. Not on this guy. I've got the weapons I want now. If I unlock the Thompson, when I un- when I unlock the Thompson and when I unlock the Webley and when I unlock the M1 M2 carbine, I may consider getting them. Consider being the key word. Doesn't mean that I will. Because I have the ones that I want. Now, when Rogers goes recon, yes, the only thing that that rifle is going to need is a new barrel and an eight, eight times scope. That is it. That is it. So literally, I've got everything set aside. So now I can fart around getting a grease using the grease gun. I can fart around just using a pistol. I don't necessarily have to use the grease gun. I can just fart around with it. Yes, I, and another thing. Yes, I, I know. If you're going to go tanker, do a little research first. Google. Google's your best friend. If you're going to go tanker, okay, now this guy, okay, uh, Sergeant Hammer, he was originally an infantryman. The moment I unlocked tanker, I turned him into a tanker. But before I did that, I made sure that I already had the adjustable wrench. This thing will save lives. Literally. It makes a really good thud noise. It makes a really good thud noise when you hit someone upside the head with it. But most importantly, you can fix anything. Cars, bikes, vans, trucks, tanks, planes. You can fix anything that you can control in the game. You can even fix triple A emplacements. And I've done that just to spite someone. You can do it. Now, the binoculars are a, a good piece of equipment if you're a recon. There used to be a little trick you can do. I know you can still do it. It has been nerfed quite a lot, and I, but I know you can still do it. Where if you don't have the scope on your bolt action, and I do know some recons that don't like the bolt, uh, don't like the scope on their bolt action, you can take your binoculars, use your binoculars, mark the the, the 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 person, pull your binoculars down, pull out your rifle, and shoot, as if you're using your scope. Because if the person's dumb enough not to move and they're still standing there, you're going to hit the target. You know, it's a poor man's scope is what it's known as. The poor man's scope. And it does bloody work. Downside to having the sco- uh, the, the binoculars is if no one else has them, the game automatically makes you squad leader. Which means you have to give orders to people in your squad. Now, that is a big downside in my honest opinion. Because, who's to say that that person you're giving orders to is even going to listen to you? Plus, there's no real benefit in game just yet to using the binoculars. Now, if they added a benefit of 
uh, okay, f you gain X percent of EXP for the people in your pl from from the people in your platoon if they actually follow your orders. Now, if, so for example, if say you tell your your platoon to defend the B the B the B cap, okay, and a whole bunch of Germans come in and you kill them, okay, and they kill them, you should get a bit of a, a partial a trickle trickling amount of EXP towards your tactical. Does that not sound fair, Jay? Yeah. See, that's why I like Jay. It's fine. <laughs> He's just a, yeah. I'm See? looking at something else. Exactly. And I think that that would be a nice add-on to using binoculars. I really do. Now, because I've got uh, uh, Panzerfausts uh, on my uh, thing, I'm actually going to take uh, that. In fact, you know what? I'm actually going to take more ammunition... Aha, I can now take two pouches from my MG40 because I keep running out of ammo on my MP40. Anyway, guys, so rule one, do the objectives. Rule two, don't throw grenades under any circumstances. I don't care if all the enemy are having a powwow around a tank praising it. Oh, mum shibai. Oh, mum shibai. I don't care. I don't care if you throw that grenade and be like, oh, I'm going to get a quadra kill. Doesn't fucking matter you're going to lose credits your question was how do i make credits i gave you that answer okay now you know leave grenades leave them at home don't take them don't look at them don't even acknowledge their fucking existence just leave them the hell alone anything that goes boom leave it the hell alone you want stuff that goes pew 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 okay and sites stay away from upgraded sites they are bugged in the game currently and cost a ridiculous amount of money for uh repair costs okay just leave them the hell alone they cost way too much for repairs okay guys until then hope you enjoyed the video my name is danny deceptive covers monhan that was jay man that was Warhammer 2020, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So peace the fuck out.